Hey guys, it's Bub here. In this video, we're taking a look at Tiny11 Builder. So, in this video, because people have had so much controversy over if Tiny10 and Tiny11 contain viruses, we're going to be testing out his Tiny11 Builder script, which allows you to build your own custom Tiny11 ISO. So this is on ntdevlab slash Tiny11 Builder on GitHub. Um, so the instructions are basically to download the Windows 11 ISO. So we do have that right here. This is the latest version from the Microsoft website, so this isn't from UUP Dump or anything. This is the official Microsoft.com. Then we mount the ISO using Windows Explorer, so we're just going to do that right now. Now that we have that mounted, that is drive E. Drive D is the ISO I used to install this, so we can get rid of that. Drive E is this installer. And I suppose we should actually extract the zip file that I downloaded from GitHub. And so I suppose all we have to do is run the script named 525 as administrator. I'm really assuming this is 525 for the simple fact that this is from Microsoft's website. I don't actually know. I, like I said, Microsoft's website. So we're going to type in E because that's the drive letter we've mounted on right there. And it is now going to create the custom version of Windows 11. So that was relatively easy. So what is this actually going to do? This is going to remove all of these bloatware apps, um, which, you know, none of these are really that helpful. Um, so these are what is still left on the operating system. Um, Teams, Edge, whatever, whatever, blah, 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 64-bit, whatever. Okay. So the ISO is actually completed already. That was pretty quick. It is, I'm actually not sure where it, went to. Alright, so when the image is completed, you'll see it in the folder where the script was extracted with the name Tiny11ISO. I'm not seeing it in here, so that could be a problem. Um, let's try it again. Let's. I should run that as administrator, because I am not seeing this ISO file anywhere, and I'm not sure what is going on here and why this is causing me so much grief and heartache. So let's try this again. No, we're going on drive E, a subdirectory of C tiny 11 already exists. Okay, I don't know what's going on. This is strange, but okay. Hopefully we'll find this ISO, I'm really hoping. Because the script was extracted here. Totally misunderstood this. This is totally my fault. We have to pick what edition we want. We're going to go with Windows Pro. So that's number six. There we go. Now it's going to go ahead and create it using DISM. Using DISM. Okay. That's a little better. I was worried that I just totally screwed this up. So I'll be back when we can actually test this ISO. Okay, so the script itself has completed so we're going to close that and we're actually going to boot the tiny 11 image that we just created so i'm going to go ahead and shut down this vm and we're just going to simply put that iso into this vm and boot it okay so we are tiny 11 iso and just double check yep we are good so now we're going to go ahead and boot this and hopefully yep there we go boot into the cd-rom drive and we are now gonna boot into the Tiny11 installer that we just created. Can't forget that part. We just made this ISO live, which I guess would prove that there's really not that many viruses in it. I mean, not that many, I mean, no viruses. If there's a script that we can look at the script and see all the commands that are running that ultimately show that there are no malicious viruses. Now, I really, I mean, I highly recommend Tiny11 just for the fact that they're this transparent about it I mean, I just think that's crazy. I mean, they're this transparent that they're going to release a script. I, I trust them. All right, and the install has completed. It is asking us to go through the out-of-box experience, which is something that some custom Windows ISOs do not allow you to do. They block the out-of-box experience, automatically create an account for you, which is definitely suspicious. So it did skip the Windows Microsoft account setup thing. We're just going to go through and just click next, next, next just to get in the desktop to see if this is truly trimmed down and if this script did work. All right, and here we are inside of the Tiny11 ISO that we made. I'm not gonna bother to install any 
VMware tools or anything just for the sake of time. But yeah, it does look like it worked. It is missing a lot. It is missing a lot of the apps. It is trimmed down. I wouldn't say it's as trimmed down as Tiny11, It's like the real Tiny11 is, but this is pretty close. So with that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of different technology videos, including device restorations. Let's take a look at the RAM usage, and then I'll see you all in the next one.